What? Disco Elysium? Since when we have, have we been playing this? We're just starting right in the middle of the game. Who can say what happened before? We're in the Whirling in Rags. We want to find a Phasmid. We cannot find a Phasmid. There's people to talk to in here. This person, for instance. The person leaning on this column. Hi, Gendarme. Another rendezvous. It's a smoker in the balcony. Right here in the Whirling in Rags. Yeah, this guy, I thought he might have something to tell us. But he sent us to a murderer. Why did you put us in an apartment with a murderer? Hi. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Not bad. Not bad at all. What brings you here? Yeah, I am actually wearing that robe, aren't I? Oh, it's his? I mean, the Sunday friend said we could have it, I guess. And he said we could have the hat. I mean, I guess I shouldn't have stolen his clothes if he wasn't there to... Well, not like we haven't stolen clothes before. We've stole, we stole a dead, man, a dead man's uniform. Hey, I met your Sunday friend. You did? And how did you like him? I didn't. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Why not? Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. Who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. Return where? To his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclay. Still, his coming and going brings some life to the village. You're saying that he was slumming it coming here? So just a high-class murderer who comes here and gets his kicks and then goes back to his life? Or is it just money? I don't know. What are you, you two? Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. And what is a Sunday friend? <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. I see. He's not an, a whole week friend. Just a Sunday friend. Is that even a friend? It is. On Sundays. But only Sundays. Well, I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. Mm hmm? What about me, gendarme? What are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I'm here to kick some ass and solve the case I'm working on. Well, here's to you. He raises his glass before taking a sip of his drink, froth grazing his mouth. Tell me about that muscular type. Oh, yeah, he did say that, that someone came to investigate the case before I did. I forgot all about that. Oh, yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. What did you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. D and did you tell him about your friend? What friend? Your Sunday friend, the witness. No, I don't think it came up. This muscular man, what did he look like? Muscular, handsome, strong. Like one of those military types. I wonder if it's Scab Leader. We still have not been able to confront Scab Leader about probably being a mercenary. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. His earpiece, you say? Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Thinking of it, we have not seen the other mercenary. Apparently the other mercenary is a woman. And I don't, I don't think we've seen anyone that we would suspect of being the third. Besides muscular, did he have any other identifying traits? Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. Did he keep yelling about the right to work? He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely. Scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Well, thanks for the information. Sure. Anything else on your mind? <laughs> that is very low. He's so different. About this robe I'm wearing. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Well, I mean, I wasn't really planning on giving it back anyway. How cunning. I like men who take what they want. Well... I mean, that only, I mean, that's probably only the case if you don't want the thing they're taking. Otherwise, it's annoying. Bye-bye, gendarme. 
Composure's real low. We do, of course. I don't know if we have that many clothes that increase composure. That's one of those stats that really has not come up all that much throughout the playthrough. I mean, there's that. And the shoes. So that's a plus two. Hi again, Gendarm. Still real low. It is a legendary roll anyway. Bye bye, Gendarm. Now, someone in the chat did suggest something to me. Mention that there's this person here. Uh, this person does have like an outline like everyone else, but if you talk to him, we don't really get a conversation. We just get some words above his head. It was suggested to me that maybe we should keep talking until this person starts repeating. Uh, repeating about money. This guy likes talking about money. And that if we do that, our chances of opening up the container with the rhetoric would go up. I have no idea why that would work, but this person just loves talking about money. Clearly this person is a badass hustler. We're a communist. We have a, I'm sure there's a lot of disagreement in our beliefs. You'll have enough when you grow old to, enough to make new money. Unless, you know, the market the market crashes. You know, a lot of people lo lose a lot of money that way. Real estate is the graveyard where tired old money goes to rest. And what makes the world turn. The laws of money are like the laws of nature. I mean, yes, if you invested all your money in the stock market and everything was guaranteed to go up all the time, sure, great. Doesn't really happen that way. Maybe it happens for many years, and then if you're not paying attention, when the correction happens, and of course all the financial experts are telling you that the correction is not going to happen... Well, maybe uh, maybe you'll have regretted put all, putting all your money in there. That might be the repeat. Yeah, okay, that's repeating. Do the cops hear of anything new to say? Yes, what is it? Oh, we can ask them about the karaoke. I bet you liked that, didn't you? Let's be honest. That was some first-rate karaoke. Uh, okay. Yes. That was pretty good. Thanks. What? No, 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 no. There are universal standards of good out there, and that, that was just complete shit. Well, I mean, clearly, you, you, my work was just too avant-garde for man with sunglasses here. He is behind the times. Jean is not right. Treat him like you treat McCoy's little brother. I see man with sunglasses tastes are just too conservative for my sounds. My hardcore sounds. Lieutenant W. Freighter, John Archetype McCoy's younger brother, Lance McCoy, although a man of 32 years, will mentally never surpass a six-year-old. Wait, what? John? Lance? Who are these people? No idea. Just passing on information stored in your fractured neural cortex. And I'm not going to pretend like he's got a learning disability. I'm standing right here. Yes, and I'm wondering why. Don't you have a case to solve? Yes. Did you want something from me? I guess not. And you? Again? 
I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head, looking like he really is having trouble believing this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. Cool shades. Are you wearing a disguise? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. He looks at you inquisitively. Oh, this is, uh, this is increased. Because I called my station, she's with him, and Esprit de Corps has gotten some buffs. Let's give it a go. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? 41st? Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds... Somewhere good. Let's talk more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Uh... Oh, the hypothetical 4-1. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. What would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Well, I mean, Kim's cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered. But Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. The lieutenant is silent. You do seem like a bit of a drag. No offense, but I could do better. None taken, my friend. None taken. Let's be honest. There's been some purely fictional talk in our imaginary station in regards of who'd even be worthy of your partnership. And the conclusion is that a man with your caliber should form his own one-man policing unit. Anyone else would just slow you down. Well, it is true. I, I do agree that most partners would slow us down. Do you have a crime to solve? I mean, you have been hanging out here for a couple of days. What is going on? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping, she says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. Who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but police officers. <sighs> yes, sir. Solving crimes, looking up bad guys and and get this and not getting that drink on at two o'clock. Well, I can't believe that. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Who is the far-out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him? Or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth. About an officer who is so far undercover, he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lang. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling, dished out by this sunglassed man. Well, I can't imagine it anymore. Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His gray eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Okay, then. See you around. Oh. Okay. The man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? I know. Super weird. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Probably. Again? I can't believe this shit. 
Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. What do oh. you say? Okay. Okay. Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. All right. Well, if Esprit de Corps says that this man is not a cop, then, I mean, I've never known Esprit de Corps to steer me wrong. So that takes care of that. All right, we're at 17.22. Yeah, find the murder weapon that never did happen. The fallen pants. Got to befriend Kuno to get the fallen pants. Well, now that we talked to that one guy, let's see if that actually did affect the container. That one guy was only interested in talking about one thing, and that's money. Does Do we have to know about money to open the container? Oh, I put a point in volition. Was that the thing... Is that what we needed for this check here? The file cabinet stands steady as ever, and the unlocked drawer slides out to greet you. Yeah, this was the volition check. We failed it before. 97% now. Let's look through Everard's files. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweep office floor, more banners. All right, so I guess this is easy Leo's list of things to do. Wash the shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Everard's plants. Then sweep the floor. Make more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim. A to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. What is so special about this borscht? Code for drugs? Booze? Blood. Well, let's take another look at the note. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweep office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Well, maybe we should ask Leo what this borscht is about. I mean, it sounded like we were not able to understand any of what was actually in the files. We just found this little post-it that Leo wrote down for his, uh, his duties. has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Been in the world for two days, been in this world for many days. Money is all about trust. Isohedral Iso 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 dice set sirens. Plus four, still 3%. Let me 
just once again right now nothing's giving a rhetoric boost let me just once again do one of those checks That's minus for rhetoric. That is also minus. This is plus one for the shirt. Is that the only thing? I think everything else was minus that could uh, that could affect rhetoric you're back before the cargo container well it actually went up to eight percent since you were last here if anything it seems to have grown slightly all right eight percent and as it's always been it's impossible to open a container with the rhetoric maybe you're losing your mind Maybe we are. Well, I don't currently have a point that, uh, well, I mean, it wouldn't matter. Rhetoric is at its learning cap. Oop, not that. Mister, I'm not gonna bother you with a long greeting, just like we talked about before. I know you're probably a busy, busy man being an important police officer and all, and personally, I think the more people keeping the peace, the better. Are you THE Leo who wrote the note to make more banners? Oh yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was that about the borscht? Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> the little guy chuckles merrily. It's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Power borscht, huh? Never heard of a borscht that turns little guys into dog fighters. Alcohol, however. What do you mean by taking this soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Who makes it at the whirling? Oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. Looks like the borscht is spiked. I'm gonna look into it. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. He didn't actually understand what you meant. And now he's just nodding along. All right, we got a new quest. The special borscht. What's so special about the borscht the strikers are eating? The cook in the whirling and rags is making it. You can find him in the kitchen. We might also want to talk to Manana because apparently Manana speaks his language. I mean, whoops, not that. Talking to the cook is not going to do much because we don't speak the same language. Not entirely sure why we're investigating the borscht. What would it be spiked with? Would Evart be? I mean, if they're further, if it's being made by the Union for the Union, is Evart spiking his own men with something? Nothing new here. 
Well, let's go to the Whirling first. Oh, scab leader? Anything new? Right to work. No. It's always a, it's a bit frustrating that we we're pretty sure scab leader is a mercenary and we can't bring it up. I don't know what kind of conversation we'll have with him. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Leo said you're friends with Manana. Is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. Yeah. What's in that borscht? Oh, so there is borscht in the pot. What's in that borscht you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. Yes. Hmm. Borscht need more vodka? Picks up a bottle from the shelf. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Yeah, all right. He's just putting vodka in the borscht, and so it's a very popular borscht. Of course, vodka. Now that makes a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. Hi, Logic. I have, I, I'm glad you uh, decided to... To say something. <laughs> uh, hmm. Electrochemistry wants us to turn it up. Logic wants us to turn it down. Now, normally you would think t listening to logic would be a better idea than listening to electrochemistry. But at the same time, we are a superstar. Turn it up. He smiles nodding vigorously, then pours half a bottle of vodka into the pot. With a whistle, he stirs the brew. Grassi, can I have some of that brew? He smiles and nods enthusiastically and, chattering away in his language, ladles some brew into a small thermal cup, then hands it to you. Stay masculine. All right, he gave us some of the special borscht. Let's have a look. Oh, there it is. So it's a usable item. Negative one morale. Why would we, uh, why would we want to use that? I'm a bit unsure. A thermal cup full of hot borscht spiked with high proof moonshine. Yum. All right, we have it, but Let's see, did that? Oops, did that just finish that quest line? Yeah, okay, it finished the quest line. I, mean, I didn't, I didn't realize that the quest was just to uh, to get to, just to get it, and then we're done. I guess that's all. been a while since we've spoken to the Hardys. I don't suppose they have anything new. 
The Copper NATO is back. What do you want? Maybe not. Seem I guess we've gotten everything for the time being. The next thing would be to track down Ruby. Someone did suggest trying the intercom. It's been a while since we've tried it. An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Yeah, I guess uh, we failed this one before, but now volition is high and we kissed the button, which is plus one. Let's go for it. No. Ooh. The last thing you need in your life is more hysteric emotions. Forget it. Find something else to do. No, the Volition does not want us to do it, unfortunately. Well, you, you mean, just because it's 92% doesn't mean you're going to get it. I, I think that was pressing the button again that uh, we got the strange conversation from. Uh, the first time we, we spoke to someone it was very staticky and the company they said they were from was um, a company that doesn't exist anymore and we don't know what that was about been a while so oh, hold on there it is again there's a spectral scent haunting this pair no doubt and it smells like sea brine mostly because it's a pair. Years of turmoil, of hopes and dreams ground beneath the inexorable tides of capital. Close our eyes and take a deep breath. What do you smell? The first thing that strikes you is the overwhelming brine. You imagine yourself underwater, a hundred-legged anthropod scuttling along the murky silt at the bottom of the sea. But then the unmistakable reek of seagull shit hits you, buoyed along on the air currents, an acrid melody atop moldering cords of wood rot and heavy fuel oil. Everything in order, detective? I'm smelling for communists, Kim. You're smelling for... You know what? I just leave you to it. Carry on, detective. <laughs> well, you don't want to inquire about it, Kim? The lieutenant lacks your highly developed politico olfactory cortex. The smell is undeniable, and it's coming from that balcony up there. You mean from Cindy? Certainement. A precocious communist youth. A symbol of a kinder, more hopeful future. Now's your chance to establish contact with your revolutionary brothers and sisters. A chance to establish contact with the future. What a beautiful, terrible thought. All right, we have tracked down a communist. Our nose wouldn't lie. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Hey, sister, let's talk politics for a minute. And what do you know about politics? Well, my nose told me that you're also a communist. We should team up, join forces. Well, well. Sounds like quite the snout you've got there. Your olfactory department wants you to know that it accepts no responsibility for wherever this line of interrogation leads you. Yes, Perception is quite adamant about it not being able to find communists, but it's doing a pretty good job of it so far. Sure. I know someone who'd love to talk the ideological stuff. You're looking for Stiban. Who's Stiban? A right communist who runs a mega cool and very secret meeting. Does this Stevan happen to have a jacket like this? We show her the white jacket. 
he might. Will you help me find him? No. <sighs> the lieutenant lets slip a sigh that seems to suggest this turn was utterly predictable. Let's see. All for five real. We should just give up. Just tell me what you want me to do. Um, I don't know if she would be insulted by, like, tossing a fiver her way. Maybe she, maybe she's really compassionate inside. Maybe she can, like, maybe she'll take pity on us. I guess I should just give up then. Nothing ever works out for me. Oh, God. If he isn't the saddest pig in the world. Incidentally, the saddest pig in the world is the title of a popular Gottwollian children's book, written and illustrated by Moritz Metzger. In 26, it received the prestigious Critica Prize for Youth Literature. Thank you, Encyclopedia. The A lot of what you have to say is completely useless, but it is giving me experience and money. Oh, fine. I'll help. But first... I want something from you. Yes, we tugged on our heartstrings. She's got you by the balls, Chief. And she intends to squeeze them. Well, we're tough. We can take a little ball squeezing. What's that? A wicked grin extends across her face. A laughing skull. Death hilarious. This is gonna be bad. Oink for me, piggy. Just once. Oink. Oink. Wow. That was easier than I expected. It's almost like you've been wanting to do it this whole time. A cool, damp feeling ripples through you. You realize you needn't have rolled over quite so easily. The lieutenant, needless to say, is not impressed. <laughs> Sounds like you're really serious about meeting Staban. It's touching, sort of. Staban's group meets only at night in an old room in these apartments here. It just so happens you're in luck. Their weekly meeting is tonight. Man, we got a bunch of stuff tonight. Poke your snout around sometime after 10 p.m. and you might just find them. All right. We, we also have to confront the person who has our gun at that time. But she says sometime after, so maybe just as long as it's tonight after 22, and maybe it's fine. What else can you tell me about this, Stevan? Just that he's a real communist. Not like the play acting you've been doing. The rest, you'll have to see for yourself. Hmm, why do I feel like there's a catch? Oh, smart pig. Because there is. See, Stepan's a bit on the paranoid side. He's got all these mega secret passphrases to keep out infiltrators and the like. You can't join the meeting without one. <clears throat> the lieutenant clears his throat. Not to interfere in your personal errand, but I wonder whether it might have something to do with that phrase Manana mentioned overhearing. Oh, right. Good thinking, Kim. The lieutenant nods. Guess this is what happens when two pigs put their heads together. She seems slightly disappointed. That's enough. Off with you then. She makes a lazy shooing motion with her dangling hand. Catch you later, Cindy. Okay, so we got to confront the pigs tonight at, at 22. Then after 22 is the communist meeting. Then after Kim goes to bed, see if Klaustia is still awake and ask her about Sunday. Then... Give Kuno cigarettes. That's what we have on deck. It's a busy night. Also, I'm a little sad that Kim didn't just say what the phrase was. Because I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Kim, I don't suppose you might want to tell me what it was? Yes. 
that that's still real low. I mean, we could pump up our logic. What do you want to know? I have all I need for now. Good. I mean, we could try to put logical clothes on. Uh, that's negative one to logic. This, okay, logical glasses. Logical shirt. Logical hat. This is another logical hat, but not as logical. Logical jacket. Okay. Plus five to logic. Okay, we got logic at five. Yes. 83%. Plus one sorry cop. Plus one Sylvie suicide jokes. Plus one Roy mentioned suicide. Kim, why did the 41st send me? You pick over what's left of your frontal cortex, but no compelling explanations emerge. There's not much left of our frontal cortex, unfortunately. But we do have a point. Yeah. Kim... Why did the 41st send me? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight precinct 57. What? No, that can't be right. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck-up. Like, as a joke. I've considered it. But it's not true, right? I don't think I can say one way or another. I do think it's somewhat unlikely, though. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes. Both stations would prefer a win. Ha, so you are their finest. I am the finest of nothing. Do you really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No, but you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet, but it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. Ah, that healed our morale. He's right. There are no airtight theories, just paranoia. You've given it some thought. Now let it go. Thanks. He does have a point. It's even considering what a mess we are, there must be some reason that we've we've been on the force for so long and have such a good record. For right now, it's still not 19 o'clock yet. Maybe we should, and we do have some money. Maybe we should see if we can purchase some more fine literature. We didn't pass the Dick Mullen check. Maybe we should see if we can do that. Hello again, esteemed officer. Nothing new there. Shelves fill to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposedly stalled. Right, let's see if we can increase reaction speed. That's negative. The hat does it. That hat's the only thing that seems to do it. The pants also are doing it. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposed stalwart. We do have something else that can increase our reaction speed. It's not that. Nope.
Uh, don't mind me as I take some speed in the middle of this bookstore. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring the surprise. 83%. But time detected, your attempt to grasp at the answer fails. It seems very close by. Pulsating just out of reach. Man, we just cannot learn about Dick Mullen. Just uh, Destiny does not want us to know about Dick Mullen. It's a strange thing. Shelves full of bio... This bookstore is not... Well, if nothing else... There is another Hyum Dollar Man book that we could buy. The display rack is brimming. This is entirely, completely you. You have found the right books. I want to buy the Hyum Dollar Man book. Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. So we'll have to content ourselves with learning more about the Yum Dollar Man. We learning about Dick Mullen is not for us, not for today at least. Okay. A classic. On the frontispiece, an anatomically unrealistic muscle man is reaching into a mountain stream, yearning to touch his glimmering mirror image. His eyes are full of childlike wonder. On the blood-soaked snow right next to him lie two giant Zweihanders. Very good. Let's, before we do that, let's go to the dice maker. Just to see if maybe they could be early, done early. And if not, we'll start reading the book. Looks like the remains of the 24th window repair shop. Oh, right. My, my light. But where are the clothes it used to display? Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? We do have something new here. I think I found the actual source of the curse. You mean the curse that I'm spared of because I live outside its immediate reach? It's a bit more complicated than I first thought it would be. I'm listening. There's a two millimeter hole in reality located in a church on the other side of the canal. I think it may be related to Pale. Excuse me? A two millimeter hole in reality? This can't be true. I'm afraid it is, man. Sona Lukanen killed the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident made the discovery. Sona is involved in this? She appears to take this in while the chatter from her headphones continues unabated. So it's even worse than I thought. It's not just the commercial area that's cursed. It's the entire world. She looks outside the window where daylight has filled the yard. Well, I wouldn't go as so far as to say that the entire world is doomed. Just Martinez? She gives you a rueful smile and takes a look around. In any case, thank you for stopping by. It's good to have an answer, even if I can't claim to understand it fully. Hmm... I guess the dice are not ready yet. So that means it's time to read a book. The cover of this tattered paperback features the man from Yeomdar standing atop a pile of bloody corpses. His two Zweihanders are crossed over his massive chest in a dramatic X, their blades dripping with gore. Hell yeah. Behind him, rise the harsh snow-capped peaks of his native Northlands. In bold red letters, the title, Hyeomdala Man, the man from Hyeomdal, 
unfurls like a banner. In the foreground, a nearly nude woman lies spread in supplication, her privates strategically covered by her flowing black hair. These images speak to something burbling deep within you. Quick, find someone or something that needs to be gutted, beheaded, impaled on a spike. Unfortunately, no such thing is around right now. Look at the back cover. The back blurb reads, his latest adventure serves as the perfect introduction to the savage Hyomdal saga. Meet man from Hyomdal, his faithful blood brother, Tiribald, the noble Lord Rothgar, and some of their most fearsome foes yet for the Northlands. For Hyomdal. Below, in smaller font, you see the parenthetical, adapted from Man from Ielndal and the Necromancer's Treasure. Man from Ielndal, Lord of Rathgar, and Man from Ielndal, the Curse of Nakt Hera. A brazen attempt to bilk fans for more money by splicing together old stories under a new title. Hmm, the publishers must have a dim view of their readership. Their main concern is the continuation of the franchise, not making literary history. Well, I mean, still, they could have some, you know, have some, uh, some pride in their work. Let's read the first couple of pages. The story opens in media res. The man from Hyomdal and his band of northern reavers are in the bowels of an ancient temple, surrounded by an army of gibbering whites, led by the deathless necromancer. One by one, the brave Northmen fall to the relentless crush of undead, only to join their number as reanimated corpses. By nightfall, only the man from Eomdal and his blood brother, Noble Tiribol, are left standing against the dead horde. It is an honor to die by your side, brother, Tiribol cries, as his battle axe beheads one of their reanimated comrades. Wow, they're in trouble now. Nine, Tiribold, the man from Hyomdal bellows over the army of flesh and bone. Have courage for the Northlands, for Hyomdal. He leaps to the mezzanine to face the black-eyed figure, and like a mad ice bear, whirling twin Zweihanders, Sturm and Drang, he plows through the ranks of the Deathless surrounding the Necromancer. The writer has never held a sword in their life, let alone two two-handed swords at the same time. <laughs> You're saying that maybe the author is not experienced in dual-wielding Zweihanders to slay a necromancer? I, 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 don't, I think you may maybe rushing to judgment. It is physically impossible for a human being to effectively dual-wield Zweihander swords in any kind of real-life combat situation. But logic, my escapism! And with deadly finesse, his twin blades scissor the necromancer's head from its body. The undead legions collapse like ragdolls as the dark magic leaves them and the two Northmen stand alone in their cursed temple, where the bodies of their lost brothers litter the floors. Skip ahead. A few chapters later, the man from Hyomdal and Tiribold are in a completely different setting high above an arid desert, riding a pair of griffins that always seem to appear at narratively convenient moments. The Northmen find themselves in the court of a powerful southern king, Lord Rothgar. The old king beseeches the man from Hyamdal to rid his kingdom of the Nakthera, a subterranean clan of blind wizards who traded their souls for demonic powers. The man from Hyomdal extracts a high price from the desperate king. He asks land for the homeless desert pygmies living exiled in the kingdom's borderlands. Rothgar offers the hand of his eldest daughter instead, but the son of winter does not budge. Hold on, why is the man from Hyomdal doing any of this? What do you mean? Why is he doing all of this? Because the flame of justice burns bright within his chest. Because, above all, he's driven to bring honor to the name of his beloved Yomdar. Because his noble Cutland blood lusts for glory and conquest. It cannot be denied. Is that all? What do you mean, is that all? Is there anything else to his character? He is the man from Yomdar, forged 
in the fury of battle. Death was his sire, and blood his dam. He had but fourteen winters when he left his frigid homelands in Cutler to seek glory and honor. That is his character. Well, never mind. Just get to the good part. You skip past a section detailing an elaborate banquet with many toasts, as well as the long and perilous journey from Rothgar's Keep to the ancient forest of Yesdor, where our heroes infiltrate the Nacteras Dire Hall. In the center of the Great Hall stands a blood altar on which a pair of Nectera are disemboweling a shrieking peasant, an unholy rite that empowers the Nectera forbidden magic. As the vile ceremony ends, the sound of steel unsheathing draws the Nectera's attention to a pair of cloaked figures standing in the doorway. This is what you came for, isn't it? A climatic bloodletting where men are reduced to muscle and fury. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is the point of reading this story. Swiftly, the visitors toss off their cloaks and unsheathe the glimmering northern steel. It's the man from Hyondar and his valiant blood brother, Tiribald. Whoa, I did not see that coming. In an instant, the Nacthera summon a horde of gibbering orchanoids who rush our heroes. The hall fills with the clang of blades and the screams of the dying as the floor goes slick with steaming orchanoid viscera. When the din of battle settles, only the man from Hyomdar and Tirabal remain standing. Exhausted and dripping with the entrails of their foes, the two Northmen confront the foul Nacthera. The man from Hyomdar's soda-like blue eyes fill with indescribable fury. For the Northlands, he cries, rushing headlong into a desperate melee. Cut him up, yum dollar man! He probably is, but you can't be sure, because this one ends in a cliffhanger and a footnote saying, to be continued in, yum dollar man at the gates of tomorrow, coming soon to your local bookstore. We have to see if the bookstore has that one. Considering the sheer amount of different yum dollar man books out there, it's very unlikely you're ever going to find the sequel. But, but, but... The man from Hyomdal stares at you on the cover, his face fixed in grim resolve. Put the book away. Well, I mean, the bookstore is still open. We could see if they have it. Also, I think maybe I should not be wearing my logic clothes when reading Hyomdaler Man. I just don't think logic gets into the spirit. The display rack is brim. This is entirely ah, completely does not seem rows and rows of Yim Dalamin. No, we have we have read this before. And the piles. I guess we cannot buy any more Yim Dalaman books. There's the one that was originally found, which is the one we got, and then we passed a white check to get the other one, the Devil Woman one, which we we read previously. So unfortunately, I guess no more Yim Dalaman for us. There is Dick Mullen up here, but we just cannot seem to pass the check. We can't seem to do it. There is another game here. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by we're our related merchandise. This is 25 real. Hmm. Do we want to spend more money than any of these other things we've been buying? Do we really want to spend 25 or do we want to use that money for something else? Is there anything else we might be able to use the money for? Anything else I have in mind? There are clothes we could buy from the street vendor. There is a, a check that I was failing on the street vendor to try to find something good. I think this is for the sunglasses. He does have the shoes on the speakers. 
but is that really worth 50 real? That's the thing. I can't really buy that's worth I can't really buy that those shoes are really worth that much. I mean, we could check that out again. Like maybe if we could haggle him down on the cost of those shoes, that would be something. But as it is, are we really paying 50 real for sneakers? We do get the speakers with them, but I do not know what we might use them for. I don't think we've really gotten any sort of clue as to what the speakers could be good for. The speakers below, you should go over and ask him about paying for those sneakers right. with your net worth. So Fawn's uh, shoes, plus one reaction speed, plus one hand-eye coordination, negative one encyclopedia. It's good that it's a double buff, but I mean, it also debuffs encyclopedia. The shine on these sunglasses. Stylish shades, huh? They'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go over and ask him. Yeah, conceptualization is so low. Uh, what did you recommend, by the way? Abort. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer. You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. They're perfect for concealing your bloodshot and baggy eyes. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No, you are definitely not buying those. Well, I am too sensible, yes. Are you sure? But they look so good on you. You should think this through, officer. Okay, what are the ugly glasses? Plus shades of self-destruction, plus one electrochemistry, negative one logic. Like I've said before, we never need to power up electrochemistry. It's just something we never need to do. The amphibian sports visor is a plus one to perception. And then there's that. Let me just remind myself, do we have any eyewear that gives us perception as it is? Actually, we don't, do we? I, I mentioned that before. It seemed weird that none of the glasses helped with perception. Okay. Okay. So we actually do ha we actually do have one here that does it. Forty and practical officer, good choice. There it is. Actually, this is a hat, isn't it? Not glasses. Yeah. Beady, suspicious eyes. A malformed green frog of the visor seems to keep an eye on your surroundings. A beady, suspicious eye. The lime-tinted cellophane appears to be poorly molded. The imprint says, made in safra. Well, we, the visor looks good on us. Conceptualization, of course, as always, very low. That one, I can, I think conceptualization more than anything else is the one that we uh, have a lot of trouble passing roles for. Like everything else, it seems like even we, we, we have low int, but it seems like for everything else, we're able to power them up. With conceptualization, it seems like we really never have that much that we can do to it. Like here, we got plus two. At this point, it seems like all we can get. Unless we were to smoke, of course. The shine. Stylish shades, huh? It's 28%. More stylish if you paid for them. With oh, not that. Worth. All right, we could boost the intellect. The 
depend on these sun stylish shades huh they 42 percent if you paid for them with net worth and uh and ask him the chat could boost us to boost us the chat could boost the int a little bit more it's still not going to be great odds but you know it seems like it's the best that uh the best that we're able to do all right 58 percent can we find some interesting sunglasses We did. Ah, I see. A pair of water blue shades. The writing on the left temple says sub insulindic rendezvous. The frame appears to be hand carved out of bone. Oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. For the first time, the street vendor's voice trails off as he watches you inspect the glasses. This is how a sea monster sees the world. You've become a sea monster, Harry. Giant, hidden, and strangely tender at heart. All is blue. All right. But these actually make your vision worse. It's like literally being underwater. <laughs> Those are interesting shades. Yes, but they also make your soul quiver like jello. So deep. Okay, so it makes me see the world as a monster and affects my soul but is terrible for vision wow officer you look so cool the street vendor has picked up his pace again as you observe the world through deep sea tinted lenses and they can be yours for a mere three real my regular customers have passed them all up because they've got no taste but you found them kim what about these the lieutenant tilts his head and steps back Eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician. Like a blind musician. But you could do worse. Take them if you want. Okay, sub insulindic rendezvous. Negative one perception, plus one Inland Empire. We never really have to boost Inland Empire, though, do we? It's just, it's not something that ever really comes up. Inland Empire is at four. It's not the highest. But just like we never have to boost electrochemistry, we never really have to boost pl uh, Inland Empire. Uh, considering conceptualization was talking when we got this, I was kind of hoping we would have a boost to that as well. But it's just Inland Okay, we'll take it. A man who knows his style. Much respect. All right. And um, I don't think there's anything here that we wanted. If he really wants yeah, it was just the itchy pants. You pay with net worth, which is plus two, and ask him if you can. Plus two to half light, which just like electrochemistry, we never need to boost that. Save the economy. What are you talking about? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things, buy eco. Why does the economy need saving? Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there not getting bored we've got to keep a flow of goods moving yeah they are absolutely premium is this really the economy we want to leave to our children okay gotta save mother economy i don't have children it's just nature powerful economies expand weak economies go extinct this economy is a distraction from culture this economy is really just a distraction from the cultural issues you know immigrants and but I don't have children, I think. Too bad, officer. Kids make it all worthwhile. Without kids, who's going to be around to enjoy the economy? Don't let me stop you. Open the box and browse a little. So he's got the pants, he's got the bad sunglasses, and he has the fallen shoes and the speakers, which, I mean, we don't have quite enough to, uh, to do that right now. But even if we did, do we want to spend that money on it is the thing. It's almost 19. It is not quite 19. It is almost there. Still here. Stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? 
Well, I don't think our conceptualization is going to get better than this anytime soon. Let's hit him with our best verse. Wait, there's something here stored away in some dusty corner. It starts like... A mirror's temperature is always zero. It is ice in the veins. Its camera is an x-ray. Whoa. What else? It is a chalice held out to you in silent communi communion. Silent communion. That's good. He's transfixed by the words. Where gaspingly you partake of a shifting identity, never your own. Dang, that's some great shit. You came up with that yourself. I'm just a vessel for the muse. Right. But really, no bullshit. That's great stuff. I sort of want to know if it's yours. I think the words are mine, yes. Fucking hey. Seems I got you all wrong. Cops aren't much known for their artistic sensibilities these days. It's good to meet a fellow poet. Someone with an appreciation for real text. The others here, so you don't really get it. It all makes it easier to bear if the words are pretty. I get you. When they really click, it makes the world seem manageable. Good to be on the same page. He gives you a thumbs up. You found some common ground with this man. Even impressed him. The next time you look in the mirror, though, remember those words. Oh, can that help us in the mirror? What that did help us do, however, is pass a few minutes to get to 19. Which means we can start our nightly activities, which start by getting the dice. you again are you looking for a die oh uh, well do, is the die available i'm sorry i'm a bit overloaded just now so i can only produce one die per customer i guess you're not quite done ready yet let's just have a look at that let's say eight hours mm, meow uh oh 1943 okay so it actually is more time that has to pass. So it, that came up at 11.43. So they really do mean eight hours. Not a little less than eight hours. Once we pick up those dice, maybe we could commission another pair of dice. You know, once we see what these do. Like the first dice were useful, that they did unlock a, a bunch of white checks. Is someone else that we could talk to back here. The woman is still hunched over the railing, her head swaying to the music. 
her eyes looking at nothing in particular. Right, so the Pale Driver, that might have more meaning for us now that we've talked about the Pale. Huh? What is it? What do you want? I think I know what's going on with you. And what is that? She sticks a filterless cigarette into a cigarette holder and reaches for the light. You're a Pale Driver. You transport goods through the Pale. Great. He asked the Pines rep about the Pale. And now he's talking to everyone about it. Well, not everyone, just, you know, a few people, like uh, the people in the church and the, the dice maker, and, and now her, and now her, right here. Fine, then. Just try not to black out again, and don't contemplate. We don't have time for that. Oh, I'm contemplating, Kim. I'm drawing existential conclusions from this. Exactly what I didn't want you to do. Ma'am, my partner wanted to know if you work in pale transport. No offense, but your partner... She lights a cigarette. A white and silver cloud of smoke disappears into her mouth. <sighs> Seems like a bit of an idiot. She breathes out. The air tastes sweet. Republica. A filterless cigarette from Misk. Republica. That's not very healthy. Neither is pale transportation. Life is transitory. I blacked out after a night of heavy drinking and lost all memory of the world. <laughs> like Gabriel Buenguerro in Pergunte Apoeira. You're the opposite of me, then. I remember everything, even things I never knew. Things you never knew? Do you miss what you never knew? The smell of liquor on Gabriel's lips after the shoot in the motor park. The roses on the day of Franco Negro's coronation. On the grand stairs of Ryle. The smoke from the fouling piece when Dolores' day was shot. The look on her face like an orgasm. The wound in her chest. My hand in my father's hand. Except I never had a father. And I never shot her innocence on Dolores' day. Over radiation? Heroic doses, Harifia. Heroic. Isn't that dangerous? Thought insertion? Dithering? The Grad Catalan Magistral? It's more than dangerous. It's sad. But at first I had to make a living. Now, when you've seen it all go away like that, rolling off like the sea, and then come back to this... She gestures at the square. The Broken Horse Monument. The clanging of machines in the distance. What are we doing here? For thousands of years, Gabriel. It doesn't have to be like this. We can just give up. We can just become a vapor. What does it look like? The pale? Like looking into the ocean at night. In the dark. And? You cannot see it, but you know it's there. And it's big, bigger than anything. Bigger than all the other things combined. What does it feel like? Nothing. Until it starts. When you are deep enough. Then, for me, it's like autumn. Dark, gray, and orange. The orange of street lights and the color of streets and electric light. It smells like autumn, too. It smells terrible. Nostalgia. Cooped up in the cabin, shaking. Terrible nostalgia. For yourself. For humans. It's too much to bear. She loves it. How do you pass through it? In the belly of an airship, behind the cell windows. So you don't look straight into it. It's not advised to look into it. Not on this lorry, then? No, the same one, a roller. They all are nowadays. Special wheels for connecting to the floor of the hold. She points to the machines, clumped up like toys. The wheels all small and round. Multi-axle trailers. One last thing. You said we can just become... vapor? Yes. I feel like I already have what you have. In some way. They say there's a point. One that I have not crossed. In the pale, super deep. 
If you stray too far, of course, on the U for one A, or in Lomonosov's land, where every step you take is one step further from home, no matter the direction. It's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past, there is a flip. Instead of writing, it erases memory, nearing some kind of indescribable finale. Maybe you've been down the motorway south. She looks at her cigarette. It's almost out. Then she has swallowed it hungrily. Then at you. The motorway south? It's a story as lone horsemen tell. Lone horsemen, Carife, not pearl drivers. Way beyond the established pearl that's lit by radio frequencies, where it goes silent and dark. And the process begins, erasure, kilometer by kilometer, in any direction. The motorway south is a road you cannot come back from. What's at the end of the motorway south? No one knows what's at the end. I've only glimpsed the beginning. I've only felt it in the distance when I was a child. A child growing on the leg. Ma'am? <sighs> Hosian. A sigh escapes her lips, then silence as she stares within herself. There is nothing more to do now. She's far away. She is receding in the clutches of some indescribable scattered emotion. A child descending. You've fried both your brains enough for today, detective. He inspects her. No response. Let's get some air. This one's far gone. He shakes his head silently as he turns to leave. All right, well, she's just full of pale exposure and is apparently extremely far gone, but we did get a thought from her. Motorway South, a temporary research bonus, negative one to visual calculus, bizarre angles, eight hours and ten minutes. At the edge of the map, the landmass begins to disintegrate into pure trigonometry. The ocean melts, becoming a tangle of sines and cosines. The mountain range turns into a sharp, angled azimuth. Its green rain shadow dithers like music turning into a waveform, and then vanishes. This is the end. A half-remembered textbook from your childhood. The porch collapsing on the edge of the isola. A transition from reality to pale. A single vector shoots out like a rocket. It's the motorway south, splintering off from the known pale. To where? Where does it go? It's a int very interesting description. Um, also, a long research time. That kind of makes me curious as to what the result of this one would be. Um, I only can assume it has something to do with uh, more of an understanding of the pale. It's a negative one to visual calculus, but hey... Visual calculus has been extremely low this whole time, hasn't it? It's 1916. Still a half hour before we can get those dice. But as for right now, I do think we will need to save the game. And say goodnight to Disco Elysium for now. So. A lot of stuff leading to uh, tonight's events. We need to get those dice. Then we need to confront confront the person who has our gun. And like I said, we'll keep Kim with us for that. Then we need to, after Kim goes to bed. Well, no, we confront the person who has the gun at 22. Then sometime after 22, we can go to the communist meeting. Then probably we want Kim to go to bed. Then we see if Klaasia is still awake. Then after that, we talk to Kuno and give him cigarettes. So that seems to be what we're going to be doing for tonight. But after we get the dice, we still will have to find things to do until 22 o'clock. Because that is when the action will start to happen. Um, that is what we'll be doing as we continue on with Disco Elysium.